Hello and welcome to Learn A Level Biology with Miss Estrick. In this video I'm going to be going through the required practical on choice chambers. So if you are new here click subscribe so you don't miss out on any videos. So this required practical is looking at the effect of an environmental variable on the movement of animals and we're going to be focusing just on the choice chamber today. You can use a maze as well in this required practical but that will come in a later video. So the environmental variable causing an effect on an animal's movement is linking to taxis and kinesis. Now I've actually already covered this in an earlier video, so I'll link that up here so you can go into it in more detail. The key thing you need to know is that they're both very simple responses which animals have as a way to move into more favourable conditions. And taxis is when the organism moves its entire body towards a favourable condition or away from an unfavourable, whereas kinesis is when an organism changes the speed of movement and the rate it changes direction. So I'm going to go through in this video. So in this video I'm going to go through the full lab report, so the aim, hypothesis, equipment and method, risk assessment and ethics, results, analysis and conclusion. And then at the end, some exam questions so you know how that could link to the exam. So the aim is what we're trying to investigate. And we're investigating the response of invertebrates to light and dark conditions and humid and dry conditions. The hypothesis is what you predict will happen. So I'm going to predict that most of the invertebrates will move into a chamber within the choice chamber, which has the conditions of being dark and humid, because those are more favourable for survival. And we'll go through why at the end of the video in the exam questions. OK, so the equipment. The main thing is the choice chamber. And this is like a large plastic petri dish and the base is split into chambers it might be split in half or it could be in quarters and the lid has holes in the top where you can insert the invertebrates in and also it provides some airflow now to create a dry chamber we would add silica gel beads and these absorb moisture in the air to create a damp or humid chamber we would insert filter paper which is soaked in water to create a dark chamber, you would cover the plastic in black paper and sellotape it down. We need the invertebrates themselves, and so that you don't touch them, you use a teaspoon to collect them and then insert them in through the hole. So next then is the method. And if you have time in your lesson, ideally you would use four different choice chambers to get the full information. The first one we can see here is empty. And that's so that we can see if, even if you don't change the conditions, do you still get uneven distribution? And um, you should find that you get relatively equal distribution to show that it is due to the independent variables and nothing else. We'll also have one choice chamber set up just investigating dry versus humid, another investigating light versus dark, and this third one here is the one at the bottom, combining the conditions, so dry and light, humid and light, dry and dark, humid and dark. And this here is just going over how you would set up those different chambers, as I said in the previous slide. So once you've created those chambers, the next step is then um, setting up the rest. So you need to have a nylon fabric sheet over the base and then you put the lid on. And the reason for this is we want the invertebrates, whether it's maggots or wood lice, to crawl over the nylon sheet rather than actually going into the base. For two reasons, it's much easier for them to crawl over the sheet rather than going up and down over the different dividers, but also it means they're not going to touch the silica gel beads, um, or you might use another chemical to absorb the moisture, which could potentially be harmful. So once we've got that nylon sheet, we then put the lid down and secure it shut. You then would use a teaspoon to insert your invertebrates into the middle hole, so they're right in the centre to begin with. And in this case, I'm using 12 because that's what AQA suggests in their handbook. Once you've done that, you leave it for five minutes. You can slightly alter that time depending on your lesson length. And then after that time, take the lid off and you count how many invertebrates are in each of the different chambers. 
And I recommend taking a picture before you do that because the invertebrates will still be moving and therefore you won't necessarily get the most accurate result. So the other things you need to consider are the risk assessment and ethics. So the risk assessment, the silica beads themselves are inert, so they shouldn't cause any harm. However, because they are um, small spheres, there is a risk of choking if you were to try and ingest them. So sounds obvious, but students should be told, do not eat the beads. Invertebrates, they could have pathogens on them, um, which could cause infection if you were touching them. So that's why we use the teaspoon to transfer them instead of your hands. But you should still also wash your hands after the practical. Now, because we're using living things or organisms in this particular required practical, you do have to consider the ethics as well. And the key thing with ethics is whenever you're working with living things, you have to make sure you're not causing permanent damage. So considering things like having an air hole in the lid so that there is plenty of oxygen for the maggots or the wood lice, being careful with the teaspoon when you're transferring them so you're not damaging their outside. Okay, next is the results. And I'm actually gonna go through what we'd expect first of all before I share with you my results. So the control, we want to show that it is the independent variables that are causing any difference. So we'd expect in the control to have an equal split, six on either side. That might not be the case though, because there is still random chance distribution of those invertebrates. The next one then, dry versus humid, we'd expect there would be more in the humid half, and that's because it would mean um, the maggots or wood lice are less likely to desiccate or dry out, um, losing water from their skin or surface if it was dry. We'd expect more in the dark because, first of all, again, it means they're less likely to desiccate, but also they are more likely to be hidden from predators. And the final one, this is a really important choice chamber because in reality, invertebrates are not just exposed to one environmental variable. Um, it's more likely to be a combination of the different variables. So we would expect this time most to be in the humid and dark chamber. So this is what I actually found when I did this experiment. So seven versus five, two versus 10, one to 11, and then we've got one in the dry and light, two in humid and light, two in dry and dark, seven in the humid and dark. Now, none of these match um, exactly what we might expect, particularly the control. We don't have an exact 50-50 split. But that, as we said, some of these slight variations from what we might expect are due to random chance distribution as well. So what we need to find out is the differences that we see between each of these chambers, is it significant or not? And to work that out, we have to do a statistic. And in this case, it'd be the chi-squared statistic. Now, I'm not actually going to go through that in this video because I have a whole other video on that. So if you need to um, recap how you would do chi-squared, I'll link it at the top and you can go and see the chi-squared video. Now, the point of doing the statistic is to help with your conclusion. And this is so, as we said, you can say if it's significant or not. So if the statistic shows there's less than 5% probability that the difference in the distribution between the two chambers or the four chambers um, are due to chance, then we can put in our conclusion that the different environmental variables in each of these changes, uh, chambers does cause a significant difference in distribution. So finally then, the types of exam questions that you could get linked to this required practical. So you could be asked to suggest a null hypothesis for this investigation, and that is always stating there'd be no pattern. So there will be no difference in the number of invertebrates in the light and dark and the humid and dry chambers is what you'd need to put for that question. The purpose of the silica beads, the silica gel or the silica beads absorbs the moisture in the atmosphere. And that is how we create this dry chamber environment. The next one, once adding the dampened filter paper to the choice chamber, you should wait five minutes before starting the experiment. So why should you do that? And that is because it provides time for the water, which has been added to the filter paper, to start to evaporate. 
and that will then create a humid environment in that chamber and as the water evaporates it will reach that nylon mesh and it'll be more wet. Next, instead of removing the lid and counting the invertebrates, suggest and explain a different method to improve the accuracy. And this links to what I said earlier. You'd take the lid off, take a photo straight away, and then count the distribution from the photo. Then we have to explain why that is more accurate. And that is because the invertebrates won't have a chance to move around into a different chamber once the lid is removed. So you are getting the exact results um, from each of those chambers before the lid is taken off and light can then go to all of the sections. Last two, explain why most invertebrates move to the dark and humid chamber. So here's a theory question now. So the humid environment is advantageous as it helps to prevent desiccation, meaning drying out. So you will have less water evaporating from their surface. But also the dark environment will prevent desiccation and it means that they're going to be less likely to be seen or captured by predators. Lastly, what type of simple behaviour is this experiment demonstrating in the invertebrates? And there is taxis. So it's not kinesis, it's taxis because the organism is moving its whole body towards a favourable condition and away from an unfavourable condition. So that is it. I hope it has helped you. If it has, give it a thumbs up and check out my other social media for resources.